Wisconsin communities face serious impacts in the near future from a forest pest called emerald ash borer. This presentation will help local government officials and staff understand the impacts of this insect and how to limit those impacts through planning and proactive response. EAB is the most destructive and costly tree pest ever to invade North America. It has killed tens of millions of ash trees in the U.S. and Canada and is established in eastern North America beyond hope of eradication. A recent U.S. Forest Service report states that the eventual loss of most ash trees on this continent to EAB should be anticipated. For municipalities, EAB has turned ash trees from an asset into a liability. Ash is common throughout Wisconsin, especially in communities, because it was a popular replacement for the American elm. To illustrate local impact of EAB, consider a typical, though fictional, Wisconsin city of 8,000 people. This city has 700 ash street trees, plus another 150 ash in developed parks and other public property. About one out of every five public trees in this city is an ash. Estimated contract cost to remove and replace these 850 public trees is about half a million dollars. Including private property, about 2,500 ash trees exist citywide, with a corresponding removal and replacement cost of over one and a half million dollars. Losing 2,500 trees from this city's urban forest would have additional citywide impacts, including annual increased heating and cooling costs of about $48,000, loss of over $37,000 worth of stormwater management service, over $12,000 in lost air pollution mitigation service, and a $69,000 drop in property values. So beyond the estimated $1.5 million for tree removal and replacement, Arborville stands to lose another $167,000 worth of infrastructure service per year from its 2,500 ash trees. EAB can also have liability costs. Fort Wayne, Indiana has had 10 tort claims against it for damage caused by falling dead ash trees. Preparation and proactive response are critical to reduce local EAB impacts because EAB can appear suddenly without any known infestation nearby. Catastrophic tree die-off begins about three to four years after EAB appears locally, continuing until essentially all untreated ash trees in the vicinity are dead. Most municipalities are not equipped to manage the public safety risk from the sudden appearance of hundreds to thousands of dead and dying trees. Failure to prepare increases impact severity and costs. EAB was first detected in the United States near Detroit in 2002. It's thought to have arrived from its native Asia via shipping crates at least 10 years prior to its discovery. In Wisconsin, EAB was first found in 2008 near West Bend. In 2009, infested trees were found on the western side of the state south of La Crosse and also in St. Paul, Minnesota. The insect continues to spread in Wisconsin and throughout the northeastern United States. In 11 years, the known existence of EAB in North America has spread from southeast Michigan to 19 states and two Canadian provinces. In North America, EAB kills only ash trees. Healthy or unhealthy, all ash are susceptible. No resistance has yet been found, so unless treated with insecticide, all ash trees in EAB's path will likely die. It is not the adult beetle, but the larvae that kill ash trees. The adult lays eggs. Eggs hatch into larvae, which bore into the tree and feed under the bark. The larvae's network of feeding tunnels cuts off the tree's food and water supply, killing the tree in three to five years. One reason EAB is so difficult to manage is that trees show no symptoms until they've been infested for about four years. Once symptoms do appear, not only is that tree infested, but many more infested but as yet symptomless ash likely exist in the vicinity. 
These are some common EAB symptoms. However, such symptoms can be due to other causes and are not positive proof of EAB. Positive signs of the insect's presence in an ash tree include feeding tunnels in a distinctively winding S-shaped pattern, EAB larvae in the tunnels, D-shaped emergence holes, or the adult beetle. Natural spread of EAB is fairly slow, but new infestations can begin far away from existing ones through movement of infested material. Because this insect spends most of its life hidden inside the tree, and because infested trees may not show symptoms, it is easy to unknowingly spread EAB by moving untreated ash products. Quarantines are imposed to prevent assisted movement of this pest. As of June 2013, 15 Wisconsin counties were quarantined for EAB. New counties will be quarantined as EAB spreads. Detroit and Toledo area communities were the first in this country to face EAB. After a decade-long siege, their ash trees are mostly gone. Based on their experience, here's what Wisconsin communities can expect. Though tree mortality starts slowly, as the insect population builds, streets suddenly become lined with dead and dying trees that break apart, causing personal injury and property damage. The safety hazard posed by large numbers of dead and dying trees along streets and in other public places forces municipalities to pull staff away from their normal duties and quickly train and use them for tree removal and wood disposal. It's all hands on deck for several years, during which time many other municipal tasks and services go undone. Budgets are overwhelmed, funds reallocated, major purchases and projects deferred. The sudden, urgent demand for contracted tree removal raises the cost and reduces availability. EAB also attracts the fly-by-night businesses that seem to follow natural disasters around. Removing dead ash trees can cost up to 40% more than removing live trees when you factor in the extra care and cleanup time to cut and process dry, brittle trees and the increased wear and tear on equipment. For many years, removal costs remain so high that there's no money left for replacement planting, compounding the impacts of tree canopy loss. Had they known then what they know now, those first infested communities say they would have started responding to EAB sooner. It takes about 10 to 12 years from the time EAB is introduced locally until all untreated ash in that population are dead. Infested trees show no symptoms for about four years. Once symptoms appear, about 15 to 20 percent of the ash die over the next three to four years, starting slowly, but at a steadily increasing rate. A tipping point is then reached, marking the start of very rapid, widespread tree die-off. The remaining 80 to 85 percent of untreated ash trees die during a three to four year period. Our fictitious community of Arborville would lose over 2,000 of its 2,500 ash trees in that final three to four year period. This tipping point is the freight train previously referenced. The train is coming our way. We don't know how to stop it, but we can blunt its impact by reducing ash tree liability before the train arrives. Unlike the ground zero communities in Michigan and Ohio, we know what awaits us. This scenario is in the near future of Wisconsin communities. For some, it has already begun. Spend time now developing and implementing a loss management strategy. Loss management options are tree removal and insecticide treatment. Removal can be reactive, waiting until symptoms appear and trees start dying, or it can be preemptive, removing some trees before they're known to be infested to reduce the number of remaining ash to a more manageable level when the tipping point is reached. Insecticides can protect trees from EAB. 
insecticide treatment not only retains tree canopy benefits, but reduces and spreads out removal of untreated trees, which is important for cost control. Treating suitable trees with insecticide has been shown to be more cost effective in the long run than removing and replacing all ash trees. In general, the most cost-effective and environmentally sound approach is an integrated strategy that combines insecticide treatment of suitable trees with removal and replacement of the rest structured over as long a time frame as possible. The sooner you implement your management strategy, the longer the period to spread out costs. If you're more than 15 miles from a known infestation, it may be too soon to begin insecticide treatment, but it's not too soon to come up with a plan for treatment. And nowhere in Wisconsin is it too soon to start removing ash that won't be treated, such as those already in poor health from other causes, those with uncorrectable structural defects, or other problem trees. Spreading tree removal over time flattens the cost spike reduces total costs and blunts other impacts of large-scale tree loss such as localized flooding, emergency response, and staff workload. Preemptive removal and insecticide treatment may seem like drastic measures, but doing nothing until trees start dying is tying yourself to the tracks waiting to be run over by the train. To estimate local impacts and develop a loss management strategy, you need to know how many ash trees you've got, where they are, how big they are, and what condition they are in. Conducting a tree inventory is an important first step in EAB response planning. Make sure your municipal code gives you authority to manage EAB and limit damage, particularly regarding ash trees on private property that could become a public safety hazard. You may already have the language you need in Dutch Elm Disease or Nuisance Provisions. If your legal counsel recommends additional language, write it broadly enough so you don't have to revise your ordinance every time a significant new pest comes along. EAB produces a lot of wood residue. Many communities have to use staff and contractors to handle it all. An important aspect of readiness planning is thinking through how you will manage the wood, noting that quarantines may restrict its movement. Logistics include contract management, staff training and scheduling, equipment rental or purchase and maintenance, and wood and brush storage, utilization, or disposal. Local costs can be reduced if you work through the logistics before your ash trees start dying. Tree canopy loss can be partially offset by planting. If you start filling vacant planting sites now, when time and budgets are far less constrained than they will be once ash start dying, those new trees will have more time to grow and start providing benefits. Encourage residents, service groups, and schools to help build local tree canopy. If you begin gradual, preemptive removal now, it may be easier to budget for replanting as ash are removed. Choose replacement trees carefully. Don't set the stage for another catastrophic loss by planting too many of any one kind of tree. As with any investment, manage risk by diversifying. People generally are shocked at the thought of losing hundreds to thousands of trees in their community. Many will not understand or support preemptive removal of public trees, especially a tree on the terrace next to their home. Enlist the public's help to retain tree canopy. Not only can people be encouraged to treat ash on their own property, some Wisconsin communities allow residents to treat or pay to treat public ash trees as well. Realistically, Many ash cannot or will not be treated, though, and a lot of trees will be cut in Wisconsin communities in the near future. Paradoxically, the sooner you start removing those public ash that won't be treated, the longer the period to structure those removals, the better for your budget, but the harder for people to accept, because it means cutting some trees that look healthy. It's important to communicate your loss management strategy to residents. Eventually, most come to understand that their city leaders are forced to choose between a dreadful option 
one which includes preemptive removal of some public ash trees, and a worse option, completely reactive removal. Proactive response makes tax dollars go farther because it helps local managers reduce and structure losses instead of leaving the insect in charge. Even with the most proactive response, EAB costs money and coming up with it is difficult. Funding sources others have used include community development block grants for replacement planting, DNR urban forestry grants for readiness projects such as inventories and response plans, utility companies may be willing to remove rather than trim ash trees along power lines during scheduled maintenance. Community foundations and designated trust funds have helped pay EAB costs in some communities. Some have used special assessments for replacement planning. Some share treatment costs with adjacent homeowners. Wilmette, Illinois raise property taxes. Toledo sells their wood chip mulch to help defray the cost of the tub grinder they bought to manage their EAB waste. Saving costs is an important aspect of budgeting. Even small improvements in efficiency can help. EAB is regulated by state and federal agencies. New infestations in Wisconsin must be confirmed by Department of Agriculture, Trade and Consumer Protection or others authorized to do so. If your community is not yet infested, suspected EAB should be reported by telephone, email, or online at the Wisconsin EAB website. For more information, please visit this website as well as the EAB Toolbox for Wisconsin Communities.